Everyone knows time travel must be used responsibly to maintain the delicate flow of history. No talking to your past self, no accidentally killing your grandfather, no accidentally not killing your grandfather if you did kill your grandfather. See, it's, it's complicated. But video games don't appear to get the message, regularly serving up spectacularly irresponsible uses for the awesome power of time travel, like messing with time for personal profit or simply to murder dudes in hilarious ways. Seriously guys, take it down a notch, this is like Paradox Central. Here are the least responsible uses for time travel. Along the way, beware spoilers for the following. Today, Barisov invented a new use for the TMD. Time is rarely used as a targeted weapon, except when Mike starts talking to me about cars and I can feel myself ageing out of boredom. I think we can all agree that 1986 was the greatest no. Formula 1 season. You know, it's the year of those big Please. turbocharged cars that were really physically My 30s, difficult to drive. slipping away! You know, those big fat slick tyres, really... But in 2010 Shooter Singularity, you could play around with what was called the Time Manipulation Device, or TMD for short. This advanced piece of tech allowed you to age and de-age the matter of your choice to get around the environment, or just to break it down and reach the soldier cowering behind behind it. A nifty piece of gear, the TMD lets you play around with the ravages of time, but it wasn't just limited to meddling with the time stream of stones or big old boats. You also had the ability to age your enemies to spooky skeletons or, quote, renew them, turning the matter of their bodies into their original state, i.e. a whole goop of gross cells. Kinda disappointed you couldn't de-age them all into babies, but to be fair, the childcare costs would be astronomical. Still, if you didn't want to turn them to dust or mush, there was an upgrade to the age and renew properties of the TMD called Revert. With this, you could turn your enemies into horrific monsters. Ugh. This was all in the aid of fixing history, but to be honest, try telling that to the guys who ended up inside out as a result of our gleefully irresponsible time meddling. Although, although, if we do end up fixing history, then technically none of the bad stuff we did ever happened. So, hands are clean, right? Loophole? Loophole! Loophole. At the start of The Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask, Hero Link has a lengthy to-do list. First, he's got to figure out how to get back to his human self, having been transfigured into a Deku scrub by the villainous Skull Kid. Then he's got to work out a way to use his ocarina's time travel powers to stop the moon smashing into the land of Termina and ending all sentient life. And finally, he has to figure out how to stop getting attacked by this tiny dog. But if escaping a dog and stopping everyone dying in a moon inferno sounds too much like hard work, you could always use your time travel powers to cheat at the lottery. You know, like a hero. The lottery shop is found in Termina's West Clock Town, and for a 10 rupee fee, will offer you a chance to win 50 rupees, a significant chunk of change, especially when you've just started the game. The only problem is, you can only win by correctly guessing that day's winning three-digit number, which is revealed every evening. Or it would be a problem, except, oh yeah, Link can honk on his ocarina at any point to travel back in time, and throw down 10 rupees on a ticket that cannot fail because he's seen the future and has decided to use this awesome power to fatten his wallet. Once you've bought a ticket, the only thing left to do is skip ahead to the evening's draw, or perhaps let the day pass naturally while you savour your impending wealth, killing time by trying to kill Tingle. Yeah! Oh, really thought that might break his legs. Oh well, maybe we can pay someone to snap Tingle's ankles with all the dough we're raking in, rinsing the Terminal Lottery three days in a row, and doubtless ruining the lottery owner's livelihood. Sweet smell of easy money. Right, what was it we were supposed to be doing? Oh yeah, the moon.
What is the first thing you would do if you were a time-traveling velociraptor from the future? I know, eat Julius Caesar and become the new emperor of Rome. But after that, we wager that the obvious play for a dinosaur with the powers to travel through time would be to avert the catastrophic asteroid collision that ended dinosaur supremacy on Earth. And yet that's not something the hyper-intelligent race of nanosaurs from 1998's Nanosaur for home computer are apparently bothered with attempting. Having risen to dominance in the year 4122 after a plague wiped out humankind, this super smart breed of dinos have developed not only time travel, but arm-mounted guns and jetpacks. Clever girls. Despite this superior tech, you, a weaponized raptor, are sent back not to save your ancestors from extinction, but to, uh, steal eggs. Hmm. Specifically, your job is to kidnap five dinosaur eggs from 65 million years ago and bring them back to the Nanosaur future. A task that's made more difficult by the fact that you've travelled back to just 20 minutes before the asteroid impacts, which means the game can only ever last 20 minutes max before everything in sight is atomized. Also making life harder are other dinosaurs, although not that much harder seeing as none of them have lasers. And the fact that you can only carry one egg at once into a time portal. I guess the time-travelling nanosaurs never mastered basket technology. Ha! <laughs> not so smart after all. Please don't travel back in time to eat me. I guess we're good. My dear brother, these holes in the thin air continue to pay dividends. I know not which musician you borrow your notes from, but if he has half the genius of the biologist I now observe, well, then you are to be the Mozart of Columbia. As a wise woman once sang, girls just want to have fun, but one girl that couldn't was Bioshock Infinite's Elizabeth. See, she was locked up in a tower due to, big spoiler, not actually being from this universe. The scientific residents of the floating city of Columbia had stolen her as a child, bringing her back through a tear in space and time. But it wasn't just babies, something much more valuable got stolen this way. Intellectual property. See, as you wandered Columbia as Booker DeWitt, you may have heard some familiar tunes. For instance, in Battleship Bay, where an 80s anthem can be heard in pipe organ form. It almost looks like a real ocean. It's just a set of elaborate pumps and rain catchers. And this barbershop quartet who sing a song familiar to any fans of coastal themed boy bands. I may not always love you. This was all because Albert Fink, supposed genius composer of Columbia, had actually just heard a bunch of tunes through tears in space and time, tunes that had definitely not been released in Columbia's 1912. Instead of being an insufferable hipster and saying, well, I liked them before they were even born, Fink instead scribbled down the tunes and re-recorded them in plinky plonky old timey style, pretending to have written them himself while sharing the secrets of the tears with his industrialist brother. I had thought you a fool, dear brother. When you told me that you heard wonderful music trumpeting from holes in the thin air, I began to doubt your mental integrity. But not only have you made your fortune from these two dads, you have lit the path for me as well. God only knows what he would be without plagiarism. Oh yeah, alive. You see, Albert's brother Jeremiah kicks off a huge war thanks to the tears, and amid the mess, you discover Albert's body in his studio, next to a tear playing Girls Just Wanna Have Fun, in a style far less pipe organy and more Cindy Lawpery. Well, joke's on you, Albert, the Cindy Lauper version was already a cover of a song by Robert Hazard. Bet you didn't know that. Oh yeah, off Hazard's 1979 demo recording. Yeah, all right, hipster. 17 years, he lived through twice. All of it mapped out, from memory. He knew the market trends before they occurred. He had the tools to make a fortune, and he did. Not all publicity is good publicity. Just look at any sassy fights between two fast food brands on Twitter.
One person who should probably know this by now is Paul Serene, the time-traveling, accent-shifting, Aidan Gillen-faced bad guy in Quantum Break. After discovering time is basically going to collapse in the future due to his experiments with the time machine, Serene hops back in time to 1999 and founds Monarch Solutions. His intention, however, is not to stop the time break from happening, but to build a time lifeboat for scientists who could maybe fix time's breakages after what he thought was an inevitable disaster. I have a team down there. They will fix the fracture. Time will go on. A time lifeboat is as expensive as it sounds, so to afford it, Paul uses the fact that he's travelled back in time to play the stock market, as you, the player, find out when you examine this room-filling set of whiteboards in his office near the end of the game. On it, you can see him noting to get involved early with internet giant YouTube in 2004, before investing in 2005 when it launched, and similarly with Twitter in 2006. Rather tellingly, there was no mention of Vine. R.I.P. But Paul didn't want the public to be wary of a super evil-looking corporation. At least not until all the dudes with guns appeared everywhere, and it was hopefully too late for anyone to do anything about it. I'm sorry, Jack. No! So to earn the goodwill of the public, Serene made sure to invest in upcoming crises. From preparing to help clean up the deep water oil spill, to patenting drugs before breakouts of swine flu, and then selling them cheap for even more good PR. Which all sounds like quite a nice thing to do, until you remember it's all a smokescreen to make a bunch of money for his plan to sail a time lifeboat to safety. A plan which also involves killing anyone who gets in his way. Still looking at this timeline, it seems like a sound investment for someone in 1999 would be post-it notes and whiteboards, because Paul Serene is going to buy loads of those in the future. All right? Okay, let's see if this works. The ability to time travel is directly linked to high school popularity. It's what scientists call the Marty McFly principle. But it's all too easy for such immense power to be used for highly irresponsible ends, as evidenced in Life is Strange, which tells the story of Blackwell Academy student Max Caulfield, who at the start of the game mysteriously finds herself able to rewind time, a power she immediately realises she can use to impress her teachers like a right little Hermione. The Daguerrean process, invented by a French painter named Louis Daguerre, around 1830. Somebody has been reading as well as posing. Nice work, Max. Throughout the game, Max occasionally uses her powers to do heroic things, like save the lives of her friends, but far more frequently tugs apart the delicate strands of the space-time continuum for spectacularly mundane reasons, including reaching things off the top of a washer-dryer. Yes, you have mad skills, Max. Just get a chair, Max. But perhaps the pettiest use of Max's time-distorting powers comes when she has to get into her dorm, but finds the insufferable Victoria and her popular clique huddled round the entrance, still sore about your smashing performance in class. Since you know all the answers, I guess you have to find another way into the dorm. We ain't moving. At this point, the responsible move would be to find another entrance, or perhaps try talking to Victoria. But why bother with social norms when you can use time reversal powers to engineer a convoluted ploy to first chase Victoria off the steps with a sprinkler... What the hell? ...then dunk a tin of paint all over her precious, precious outfit. No way! No f***ing You okay, way. Victoria? Oh, Victoria, I love how you'll just wear anything. In the end, Max never finds out for sure whether the deadly storm that's sweeping in to destroy Arcadia Bay is happening as a direct result of her time rewinding, but it's implied that it may be. And what a chilling prospect. Was it really worth bringing death and destruction to a whole town just to wreck up Victoria's cashmere coat? Was it, Max? Yes? No, yeah, correct. No, yeah, it was. For sure. Sorry, Anderson. For a cautionary tale of the dangers of time travel, look no further than dear, sweet Major Anderson in Titanfall 2. Rather than using time travel to rip off pop music or dump paint on his high school enemies, poor Major Anderson was trying to investigate a mysterious weapon when a time jump glitched him cleanly in half. BT, I found Anderson. He's, uh, in the ceiling. Objective complete. Knowing that Anderson was a casualty of time travel, you'd think we'd be more careful when jumping between times. Well, we weren't. This handsome-looking handwear was far too fun and far too helpful, as it allowed us to tactically hop back and forth in time to find routes around the complex, 
avoid enemies to recompose ourselves. Copy that control. and flank enemies through space and time, only to jump back and take them out from where they least expected. Who has been to be honest, we felt a little bad about that last one as we did it over and over again to unsuspecting soldiers. Watch your back. Watch your Basically, we used the unlimited potential of time travel to punch someone in the head when they weren't looking, which honestly didn't feel very heroic. What kind of jerk would do that? Ah! Okay, I deserve that. Who has been so, those are some very irresponsible uses of time travel. Honestly, are you trying to collapse the, the delicate folds? You're unraveling the rope of time, video game people. And frankly, I've had enough, which is why I will never play another video game again in my life. Uh, but can you think of any other <laughs> irresponsible uses of time travel? If so, why not pop them in the comments, because we'd love to hear from you. And if you enjoyed this, then why not watch another video? This one up here is from us, it's about the boss battles that rocked us the hardest. And this one down here is from Outside Xbox. It is about unintentionally creepy children in games, and they will haunt you as they haunt us. And if you did enjoy this, then please subscribe and ring that bell. Goodbye.